The following podcast is a next level production. Go back to sleep, worm. Hello? You're not supposed to be here. Yep, I completely agree. Where are you? Surrender the body to Mark. Sorry, what? The body? What? Surrender the body? What body? Uh, the idiot's in control. Powers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And we are back. So, uh, <laughs> thankfully, we are back. And it's, uh, like I stated before, we would come back for Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 1. So, Steve, it's great to be back. And you've been doing such a great job with doing two podcasts in a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for it was each great. episode. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. Um, I, I you know podcasting with Laura and Daphne has been just wonderful, and uh, they're both on board for the next season of those shows. So w- when those come around, we'll be scheduling that out and lining that up. And I think uh, Laura was really excited. Uh, Daphne's really excited for the next season of Snowpiercer, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful to them for stepping in. But I'm also I'm also very thankful to be back with my partner, my co-host, <laughs> my my main guy. Mark <laughs> on yeah. panels to pixels. <laughs> yes, we are back. So, yeah, I had a little bit of a hiatus. I had some things I had to clear up with moving and all that good stuff. Sometimes you just need a break. So, I was able to get a lot of things done, accomplished, was able to get away for a vacation, got to meet our fen- friends at the Fendemic Tour in Atlanta, Georgia, which was awesome. I uh, had a great time there. Uh, I'll send up some pictures for the those of you that actually want in our social media platforms to see all the fun stuff that we did there in Atlanta. But right now, what we're covering, and this is what we're going to continue to cover until the very end of it, is Moon Knight Season 1. And this is going to be Episode 1. So, Steve, take us in on Moon Knight. Whew. Episode one, season one, episode one, the goldfish problem. Stephen Grant learns that he may be a superhero, but he may also share a body with a ruthless mercenary. Very simple, right to the <laughs> point. Uh, we jump right into the thing of Stephen Grant be, you know, waking up to everything that he is unaware of. So, uh, and uh, oddly enough, too, with that, that opening title and what the image was presented to us in social media too, because it's a goldfish and we've seen this before in other Marvel mediums too, where they've had an animal. So with Captain Marvel, we got the cat, Mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, in humans, we have a bulldog (laughs) and there's so many other, uh, animals to attribute to specific Marvel mediums too. So, I guess the goldfish is uh, another thing that we uh, actually have to look forward to. Uh, I'm wondering if it'll be a staple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sh- I, I hope so. It's, it was a, it was a great it was a great way to kick us off. Uh, you know, seeing who Stephen Grant kind of is and what's going on. And I love you know it's it's one of those things that we've we've talked about before with these Marvel shows on Disney that they don't they don't treat their viewers as stupid. I, I you no. know I hope eventually we're going to get a Moon Knight origin but they just they just launched us right into it like there was i mean i loved i loved it th- this episode it's uh it's not the moon night that i remember but i'm mm-hmm. hooked man i am uh, i am all in and i am uh, I-, I can't wait to see this mystery unravel throughout the next five episodes it's horrible that we're only getting six episodes of this show though um yeah they yeah. better pick it up for a season two unless i i can't believe they would wrap it all up in one season I don't think they will. I think this is a character that's going to be very much from almost like with Hawkeye because we're going to see Hawkeye. We're going to see uh, his cohort within the Hawkeye series as well mm-hmm. uh, into the main MCU as well uh, as far as like within movies. So I don't think they're just going to like throw these people aside. Same thing with Miss Marvel. We, we have that to look forward to as well. And that's going to be present within Captain Marvel 2, which was 
kind of coined as the Marvels. Hmm. Because we're not only getting yet one Captain Marvel, we're going to get three within that particular movie as well, from what wow. we're hearing. So I, I think the the MCU or Disney Plus series literally is this, uh, a platform for them to introduce these new particular characters. So that way, when they come into the MCU proper or the movies, at, as it were, they have already a background that we are aware of and we look forward to the seeing them on the big screen and instead of the smaller screen in our own homes. So I'm really, really enjoying this aspect of how they're integrating something far better than what they used to do with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. because they kind of ignored that for years and we did get that with Agent Carter a little bit and she was thrown into the MCU but we never really got more out of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. group. And it's still uh, on Disney+, Plus, and you can check those episodes out, as well as Agent Carter. But they're not necessarily... Uh, I don't think they're canon at this point. But yeah, they can be canon sure. as an yeah. alternate universe, if you want to think of it that way. Because there is a multiverse out there. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, with that, we're, we're just going to mosey on down the road and right into our initial thoughts. So, Steve, what were your initial thoughts of the uh, actual show? Yeah, and, and like I said, I, I was just blown away by by this Moon Knight. I I loved it. The the whole the whole thing with the goldfish. I don't even think I have it in my notes, but it was it was cool. Uh, that thread throughout the episode, how it ran. I love that we got to see the suit at the end. Uh, it, they didn't make us wait on that. I I just I love the mystery. I, I like I said before, I, the mystery is going to unravel throughout the season, and I, I'm very excited to see where this is going to take us. I'm uh, I want to talk about it in my notes a little bit. We'll, we'll talk about some of the storytelling method to see if they mm -hmm. what they're going to do. But uh, but yeah. yeah, no, I'm I'm all in, man. I'm ex I'm very very excited for this one. Yeah, and my feeling is too. Uh, I'm as you listeners know, I am a comic fan. But as far as knowing a lot of Moon Knight, Steve is more of the uh, superior when it comes to knowing of the comic book than I am. I only remember the character in the 70s and 80s to some degree because he would pop up every once in a while. I enjoyed this. I took my first viewing, second and third viewing of this particular show as just somebody who's just watching it on Disney+. Plus, Somebody who was aware of the character but didn't know very much all the secrets within and I, I just jumped on it and loved it and there's a lot of easter eggs in there too that we're going to cover or a few actually not a lot but my feeling is is that uh, I enjoyed the episode as a whole uh, we get to see it through Stephen Grant's eyes uh, in comparison to instead of Mark Spector's and the difference comparison to the comic version of Stephen and Mark, in comparison to the uh, the comic as per the uh, the show itself, because it's very different. Uh, in this case, uh, Stephen is not really aware of Mark and what's going on, and I enjoy that fact. But we're seeing it through Stephen's eyes, and he we're learning through Stephen at this point, and I enjoy that aspect because it's it's a way for us to actually learn about Mark Specter and who he is. And mind you, we don't get this until the very end. But uh, the one cool thing that they did, and you already mentioned it, Steve, we get the costume at the very end of the episode. We didn't have to wait a whole season or two, like in Daredevil on Netflix, where we had to wait to get that costume. It shows up at the very end of this episode, which I'm really, really appreciative of. All right, so uh, with that, we should uh, jump into our top fives. Do you want to do that, or do you want to talk about some some different little facts and, and the Wikipedia things that I found about these different uh, Egyptian gods? Can we can we do cover that kind of cover that first? Do you think or sure? Let's yeah. do that then. Okay, we can just go back and forth if you want. Just look at sure. if we're looking at the doc. Sure. Khonshu is an actual Egyptian god of the moon. He is thought of as a traveler. So that's mm -hmm. kind of because the moon travels uh, through the sky. That's kind of what they what they do with that. So, and that's the different versions of the moon mm -hmm. because uh, as we all know. The lunar cycle is very different. It you know it goes from small to a full moon. So we get the various versions of the moon itself. Uh, the Ennead, or Great Ennead, was a group of nine Egyptian gods, Adam, Shu, 
Tefnut, Geb, Nut, Osiris, Isis, Seti, uh, Nephthys, and sometimes Horus, which make it ten. Yeah, it's a weird setup with, with these nine gods because, like, sometimes they include the tenth one. Sometimes they insert different ones to make yeah. the nine. It wasn't super clear to me. But Atom uh, was like the the creator or like the father of the king. But there was like a group that was a was the like the creators. Okay. All right, and uh, yeah, it, it's funny. I my mother is a huge fan of Egyptian war mm-hmm. and the gods and. If you think about it, too, um, if we look at the gods within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we've already gotten a touch of that with, let's say, Thor, Loki, uh, you know, Odin. We haven't gotten Zeus yet, but we we intend on getting that at, at a certain point uh, when it comes to Greek and Norse mythology. You know, we have those. A lot of these are based upon smaller... Uh, ruled religions, as it were. You know, we don't have that true one Catholic God that's out there yet, but it, it is spoken a lot of times throughout a lot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but we didn't get a presence of that in any way, shape, or form, which is fine. Um, they, I guess these would be lower-tiered gods because there's only so many of us or so many people that follow them, and the more that they have the more strength that they have within each particular universe, Mm -hmm. which is very interesting too, because you would think, Oh, if they were such great gods, they would have something to do with what was going on with Thanos. You know, they would make themselves part of that interaction or, or things of that nature. Thor was the only one that we knew of. Uh, Loki was the only one that we knew of. Oh, you know, a lot of that was kind of dismissed, but at least with this, we get a little bit more, and I'm sure that we'll get uh, some sort of narrowing down of where these people or where these gods, as it were, were at that time, because I'm sure that's going to come up at a certain point as well. Um, so really, the, the most important one that we covered in this, and, and I don't have a lot of the most important one from this episode is Amit. That's is this is the goddess that Arthur Harrow serves. Uh, she was an Egyptian goddess of the death. They they had like several. It's a weird, but the whole Egyptian religions were weird because uh, th- they had so many different gods. But uh, Amit would actually eat the heart of anyone who was not found worthy by mm-hmm. Anubis, and then yes. would like prevent them from getting to the other the other side and and so it's it's a whole complicated concept of of death and how people crossed over to to the other side that the egyptians had that was uh uh very strange um huh which is interesting too because in your notes here uh regarding the gods and everything you said you say here osiris replaced anubis as the god of the dead yeah, there was a weird thing in the Wikipedia, and I didn't get a chance to dive too deep into the whole of it, but there's like a whole process that involves several different gods when you die, apparently, that you would go through different uh, levels and sections, and different gods rule different things. Um, yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how they play this out throughout the rest of the the series and like Shu and Tefnut, the other ones that he mentions before his boss kind of cut him off, cut him off. I think those were brother and sister, I think. Um, huh. I, and it's, it's a, yeah, it's a whole weird thing. Like I said, so I don't know how much, how deep they're going to dive in the, in the series of it. I know that there's some of the comics that have, have dove deep kind of into what happened between, um, Amet and Khonshu and the other gods of the dead. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to watch the series and see how it progresses. Yeah, exactly. And with part of that within this particular episode, we had a few Easter eggs, a few tidbits, as it were, uh, for us Marvel fans that are out there, too. Uh, one first off is at the very beginning when Steve comes to work and he's at the museum, encounters the girl. She's turning, uh, what was it, the Pyramid of Giza, <laughs> uh, into a rubbish dump. Yeah. And and he takes her away, and as he's walking, you actually do see a QR code in the museum itself. So here's something that's interesting out there, panelers. Uh, so it, I learned this the next day after it premiered, and I looked online as like anybody else would, but somebody had 
posted it stating that if you scan that QR code, you get a free comic from Marvel Comics. And it's a downloadable digital comic of the first appearance of Moon Knight in Werewolf by Night. Oh, so okay. you could easily, you know, scan that on your big screen TV and with your phone or tablet and it will take you and you can actually read the first issue or appearance of Moon Knight and Werewolf by Night. And uh, I think they intend on doing that more and more as the show goes on so that we learn as we go where, you know, Moon Knight came from, from the comics. So it's a nice little tidbit there. Uh, second one would be, well, um, well, we, I love how we see Stephen Grant just show up and it's the first time we actually see him wake up and his jaw is bro not broken, but it's unhinged and he, he's got blood coming from it. He's in front of a castle. A lot of people are saying this castle's in Germany. No, that castle is, guess where? Latveria. That is the castle of Victor Von Doom. And that is where that scarab is. So we kind of get that tidbit because when he gets the cupcake van or truck in the back as he's driving, and you can see this in sequence, and you, I've actually paused it. It said uh, well, something, something, Von D, Von Doom. So this is kind of teasing us in a sense of we are getting Victor Von Doom, which is Dr. Doom. So we're going to get that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's just yet another teaser. Uh, as far as uh, anything else, that's that's all I got. Like I said, it was only a couple of three that, I, that came to my mind. The only one other that I had that I was kind of struggling on was at the very end fight scene when we actually do see Moon Knight. And full garb, which was amazing. And I loved how it presented itself. And, you know, like I said, we didn't have to wait a, a season or two in order to see an actual, you know, costume. Like in Daredevil on Netflix. But he is battling something. And that, a lot of people kept saying that's Werewolf by Night. I thought it was as well. But as I watched it a few times, it looked like kind of something that reminded me of Anubis himself, like a dog with the little um, thing around his, his head, like a headdress. It looked just like Anubis at a certain point and the way it was elongated. So I don't think that was Werewolf by Night anymore. I'm thinking that's something else. Yeah, I'm thinking it was just some creature that it, that Ahmet has at her disposal to, to yeah, to track down and, and grab her enemies. So, yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. So it's one of those things that uh, they set forth. It would have been great if it does, but if they do introduce it, it would be amazing. I, I would love to see that particular character. Because that's where, apparently, where we actually first saw Moon Knight. All right, so uh, now we could actually move into our top fives. Steven. Steven. I could save us. But I can't have you fighting me this time. You need to give me control. You understand what control of what? What you're talking about? That thing's about to break through the door. We're out of time. All right, oh, hey, me. listen to me. No, no. Look at me. No. Look at me. This is real. This is real. I'm real. No, no it's not real. It's yes. Not real. So, Steve, what do you have? Well, the first one I have is pretty short and sweet, but it's it's so the whole time I'm watching it for the first time, I'm like that voice, the voice of Khonshu. I'm just like that voice. I can't <laughs> figure out who it is. And then at the end, when I was watching the credits, of course, it's F. Murray Abraham uh, yep. credited as the voice of Khonshu. So I thought it was really, really cool uh, to see that's a that's an actor who's been around for years and years and years. I haven't uh, heard the name mentioned very often recently, but it was it was cool uh, to see him. And I loved all of his lines. I've got a couple of them in our quotes section. Um, but I, I hope, and this is the thing that I think uh, one of our friends posted in a message thread about the humor of it, but there was a lot of his lines that I really hope the writers meant for them to be funny because they really came <laughs> out as sarcastic and funny and had me laughing every time I watched the episode. I just loved it. Oh, the idiot again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I loved F. Murray Abraham. I, I knew that voice right away, unfortunately. It was the best. I didn't even have to look at credits or who was in it. But as soon as I heard it, I'm like, oh, my God. It's F. Murray Abraham. The last thing I saw him was in Mythic Quest. And you can see that on Apple TV+. And uh, I love that series itself. 
Uh, obviously, he's older, and you know, and his his credits obviously go for years. And he was an Amadeus, and that was the most, I think, the most important one in my life when well, I first saw him. And he was such he's such an amazing actor, and his voice is so prominent too. And I think it works for the actual movie. He, he, he's so distinct in his voice. It, it kind of reminds me of, oh, <laughs> if you, you know, Darth Vader or or things of that nature, all those characters, you know, it, it gives you that, you know, him as Kanchu actually makes so much sense. But the, the hilarity of the way he speaks to Steve in the actual episode is hilarious. Uh, very much almost like Stick in Daredevil, if you think about it, too. <laughs> uh my number five or to start off mine well that would be steve himself and how much of a difference he is from the comic to the show and on top of that uh he what did they say he has that uh mark or steve or whoever these people are in one person it's a disassociative uh, disorder or something yeah, they, depending on who you talk to, it just <laughs> it I, depends. I think of it multiple personality disorder. Yeah. That yeah. that's my feeling. That's what I always perceived it as from the comics. Yeah, but from the layman's case, we, perspective, we'll use we'll use multiple personalities. Yeah, yeah, and he has only two at this point that we know of. One which knows of the other and has been protected of of it of the one who is t- technically quote unquote the idiot who we'll talk about, which is Steve. Uh, and he's a, a, a gift shoppist and uh, he uh, and, and with his accent that is like over the top for Britain, I think uh, it, it sounds kind of fake or an American's per- perspective of it. So I don't know if this is a made up character in Mark's mind. So that way he could play off as being normal, you know. But the way Mark actually, you know, chains him up, self up with the bedpost, and there's no like it, apparently to Steve, this is kind of ordinary. But with him being as goofy as he is in comparison to the comic, Steve is not as goofy in the comic. It, it, he has a regular life. He has a brain. We actually see that he has a brain because he's very versed in the Egyptian culture within. The museum that he's working with and you know he wanted to become you could tell he wanted to become a tour guide and he got shot down right away by his boss yeah and i thought I, that was pretty funny i think we're just gonna have to accept and, and and we can keep saying it but really i think we're just going to accept that this series is going to be very different different from, oh yeah from the, from the comic book because the comic that i remember you know stephen grant was like this millionaire playboy kind of guy that's why people compared it to, to batman it's totally different from batman but that's yeah. why he, they had that comparison so i think we just need to accept that uh and this is kind of my second one as well is just poor stephen uh you know he, <laughs> he, he thought he got stood up he's there at the steak restaurant and and, and then he, he Feel, he finds out that night, you know, there at the restaurant that he's lost two days, basically, because I'm, mm-hmm. you know, she said, I'm assuming it was Thursday when she said tomorrow, and then now it's Sunday. So he's lost two days. And the only thing that I kind of had a question about really was because you mentioned at the top that when he when we see him wake up in, I think the, I think the side of the cupcake truck says Latveria, Latveria cupcakes or something like that uh, mm-hmm. on it. So uh, when he wakes up in Latveria, um, he does have this, his, his jaw is kind of messed up and he, he kind of you know, feels around his chest and his area. You can tell that he's been injured. And so when he wakes up Sunday night, I'm kind of surprised we didn't have some sort of reaction of that. You know, maybe he slept long enough to have healed. Maybe his body does have some sort of healing properties, you know, but that was the only thing that I kind of questioned on the second, the second and third viewing was I was like, when he wake up a little stiff and a little bit like, like he had been through a fight uh, there on that, that Sunday, but yeah, uh, but you know, like I said, I think it's plausible for us to, to. I can kind of forgive that because I know in in the original comic he kind of had a superhuman kind of strength and in healing kind of maybe not healing, but he was super strong, and so his body recovered faster than like normal people would have. So yeah, so yeah, I just love that 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 he had that scarab and. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it was open too when we see him when it, he lifts his hand and his hand's covered in blood, mm-hmm. and the scarab the the wings of it are open, 
So it's as if it was used as a weapon, hence the blood, I think. Absolutely. On it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But yeah, I, uh, I that's the only thing that, that like I said, I, I love that character of, of Stephen Grant that we're, we're, that at least in this episode, we're seeing the story kind of through his eyes every moment. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, he wakes up and the truck is driving in reverse, you know, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm in reverse. And then, you know, he's like, he throws the gun out the window and you hear Khonshu go, did he just throw the gun? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> relinquish the body <laughs> yeah yeah it was know? great so yeah i'm right there with you stephen grant is a is a cool character i i can't wait to see uh how much more of him we get to see played out um and, and i kind of had this in my notes but i'll mention it here now because i well no, no actually I'll, I'll get it to my next one when i get to my next point okay well my only other point well after that would because this would be my number four mm-hmm. that would be mark specter himself uh very interesting enough that we don't see much of him but we get bits and tastes of him like when steven finds the the cell phone mm-hmm. and, and the key, he has the to car move, key yeah and the car key yep and he has to move the chair he sees all these inconsistencies in his apartment you know he sees the scratches was able to find the cell phone picks up the phone there's a, a character on the phone that i'm not familiar with but apparently she is aware of mark and he has this conversation with it and then he realizes, Oh, okay. Uh, there's something definitely going on here. And the fact that we see Mark at the very end talking directly to Steve in the mirror where the two consciences of this particular person, this vessel, uh, this human being are actually talking with one another and Mark asking to take over. You need to relinquish. Give me the, you know, let me take over. Which is pretty cool because you know who is the dominant particular personality within this. Very much different than what we got from the comic, like you stated, which I I prefer because in, everybody always looked at Moon Knight as the Batman of the Marvel Universe. And in this case, we're getting somebody who has these mental issues of multiple personality. And we right now we're only seeing two uh, personalities but at least we're getting a perspective of like uh what it is to have mental illness as well as uh somebody who's a superhero and has strengths within those personalities because when we did split remember us covering that steve that was amazing and that was like for a a, a villain at that point but in this case we have it for somebody who's a superhero and i'm really Really looking forward to see what we get out of this character. Yeah. And you mentioned the cell phone and, and on my, my my third watch, and I think I saw it on my first watch, but I didn't take note of it. But the third watch, I definitely took note of it. When he's scrolling through that phone, he sees all those missed calls from Layla. Right in the middle, there's a missed call from someone called Duchamp. Uh, I don't Ooh. know who that is. I just, I caught it. It's very quick. It's only one call in there. So I, I, I'm, I'm assuming they wouldn't show that to us if they're not going to reveal something of it later. So Duchamp is a name that we need to uh, watch out for. So, um, I, I, You say the last name Duchamp. And yeah. the one thing that comes to my mind, remember, stand by me, Teddy Duchamp. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, 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 uh, somehow that my that name came to my mind, Teddy mm-hmm. Duchamp. Interesting. He, he, Interesting. Yeah, and he had issues too, if you remember it, within Stand by Me. Yeah, I'm wondering it's been if too that's going to be. I, I, well, listeners, go back there, check it out. Maybe I'm going on some sort of quest to find something within the show. Who knows? But Stand by Me was still a great movie based upon a Stephen King novel called The Body, and it had uh, River Phoenix, uh, Will Wheaton. Corey Feldman and uh, a whole bunch of other people yeah. that were in that cast that were amazing. But Teddy Duchamp was played by Corey Feldman. Maybe I'm stretching it. Maybe I'm not. But go check it out and let me know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> my next one is just a bunch of questions that I have uh, from this, which is sure. – uh, and I'm just going to run through them real quick. We don't really have these answers, but uh, you know, who is Stephen talking to when he's calling his mother? Is he actually calling – his mother is he? Yeah. Is it some sort of a? I don't know. Um, so maybe I, it's I, something that Mark has created on the other end because it looks like uh, I listened a little bit of TV podcasts and industries, and they talked about this, and they even stated, "Is he actually talking to somebody, or maybe it's just a, f- yeah. a phone number that he has set up 
that he just leaves messages to, but it's not as if he's interacting with somebody really. Well, no, and that's the thing. He was in that second phone call and the second conversation he has. It sounds like he's actually having a conversation with someone to me. Yeah. The, when I listen, when I watched it the third time, I'm fairly certain because there's pauses. He says something about the flowers and mm-hmm. like, so I, I don't think, you know, in the first conversation, he said he was leaving a message in this one. So, so yeah, I, I that's my first question. Uh, my other question uh, is how does he still have a job if he just <laughs> can disappear for days? And, uh, and, and then, on top of that, he, <laughs> and he got yelled at too, chastised by his boss because yeah. he was supposed to do inventory. And, and she doesn't even mention there. the fact that he was gone for like a yeah. day. <laughs> Meaning that Somebody's in on this because if you think yeah. about it, the security guards call him by different names. Is that because Mark is going around because that's how – literally how Steve got the date because he didn't even know he had a date. And it, it sounded to me like Mark or maybe another personality with yeah. another name was able to get Steve this this date. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, Steve's vegan and he got a date at a steakhouse and he winds up ordering it the, the best part. Uh, and he didn't even know how to order a steak as it was, uh, which makes me laugh too. Cause you wonder if about Steve and him being vegan and probably the other personalities being, you know, carnivorous and loving steak and meat. Mm-hmm. So he, he's got a well-rounded diet. He probably has a lot of <laughs> vegetables in his life as well as meat. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we already talked about, you know, who is the woman on the phone. Um, uh, and then, uh, the, only, the last question I have, and I'll go more into this in my last point is, are they going to show us the missed scenes from the other characters oh, perspective? Yeah. Are we going to get to see those fight scenes? And I'll I talk more to. about that later. So, yeah. That that was part of what my uh, my next point was. Literally, mm-hmm. was the uh, the the missing spots and when Steve would come in. Uh, the very first time we notice him, he's in front of the castle and he waves and they start shooting and he's mm-hmm. running for his life. And that's you know he's got the the dislocated jaw. He puts it back. Ouch! That hurt. Just watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Oscar Isaac actually does an amazing job in it. And then on top of that, like like the we get to that point where he's in the the transit uh, or the that truck, and at one point the he has the gun, he's there, he's going straight forward. The next time we see him, the front windshield's blown out, and the 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 driver's side window is broken as well, and he doesn't know where he is at mm-hmm. certain times. He's going in and out. The personality is going in and mm-hmm. out. I don't know if it's due to trauma or it's just that, uh, of control of the particular personality that's at hand. And I would love to see that too, where, where those missing bits were, because that would make up for a lot. Yeah. So I'll just go into it here. This was actually what I'll move. I'll move my points around a little bit here. Cause I'll go into what, what I expand upon that a little bit, because I, I love that, you, that this was something you thought about because here, here, th- my initial thought, because the scenes we miss, okay, we miss whatever happened before he ended up on the ground. We, we miss mm-hmm. that. We, then there's, there's a blackout in the, in the city, in the, in the village yeah. when he wakes up. And like you said, he's got the bloody, the bloody scarab. Okay, then we have a blackout in we have at least two blackouts in the van Mm -hmm. where he wakes up at one point and the guy is shot dead in the back of the back of the van. And then he wakes up another time and he's he's driving the van, like you said, backwards. So we have these kind of missed times. And I'm hoping, like you said, this is what my whole point of this is, is I'm hoping this is not a Disneyfication of the show to take away the violence to only show us the aftermath of the violence. Mm. You know, that's what my worry is. My worry is that we're never going to see these scenes from a different point of view because Disney doesn't want to show us the violence. Cause that scene in the street there, the village had to be a violent fight scene. Cause he had like four or five dead bodies around him. Yes. And then he's holding that bloody scarab. And then of course the guy who shot looks like he's shot in the head in the back of the van. And obviously there was something else because like you said, the whole front windshield is blown out when he's driving in reverse. So yes. I, I, I just hope that we get to see these scenes from Mark's I, I'm gonna assume Mark's uh, perspective. Uh, yeah, from Mark's perspective, the him yeah. coming in and out of of and what Khonshu is saying, you know, we see, we hear what Khonshu is saying to Steven. 
but we don't know what Kanshu was saying to Mark. And so I, I'm, I'm kind of excited that I hope they do give us like the next episode, uh, maybe partially it's, it gives us those cutaway scenes. Maybe they don't, I don't know, but I, I just hope it's not, like I said, I hope it's not a disnification of the character to take away the violent bits. Yeah. Don't water down the actual, mm -hmm. like the violence that's in it. Now we'll get into that when we talk about news, because we're going to talk about a little bit of Disney plus and what they've done recently. Okay. But yeah, I, I understand that completely. And I feel the same way too. It's mm -hmm. like, I hope they don't do that, but we'll, we'll see. Um, my last part would be literally, Ethan Hawke as Arthur Harrow. Now, I'm not familiar with the particular uh, the character itself. Apparently, it was granted from the uh, the comic itself. Both have those scales of justice on their arm. Both uh, Steve and Arthur have it, as well as some of the minions of Arthur have it as well. So, I'm curious in what his power really justifies, because uh, when he takes that woman's life away... That really bothered me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she didn't. She's an old woman. What? What is the worst thing that she could do? And they're like, well, you might have not done anything before, but it's something that you can do. What could she have said? Made a nasty story or made up story about somebody? This woman's older. But also, in talking about how they kind of edit too, uh, you do see her go gray when she passes away, or the life yeah. force comes yeah, we, out of her. You get her dying. Yeah. Yeah, and we we but when they take her away, you don't really see it as gray. She's just slightly pale, mm -hmm. which I'm very. I'm wondering if they're going to elaborate more into this. And and my my curiosity leans too, since uh, Arthur wanted that scarab and apparently was at uh, Doom Castle, as I will call it, uh, because it seems to me it's more in the in the sense of Latveria, not Germany or within that area. But he is speaking Egyptian. They all bow to his, his to their knees, and it's like oh bollocks. And um, Steve's like uh, he didn't realize because he didn't of all things he didn't speak Egyptian, even though he <laughs> loves uh, Egyptian culture. But uh, the fact is, is that what's his association with Doom in that castle and that scarab? What was uh, Doom or whoever is in that particular castle? I'm not going to say Doom, but. What was that person doing with it, and why did Arthur need it? So I'm curious to see what comes up in future episodes regarding this. Now, Derek, Chris, and John at TV Podcast Industries have the luxurious pleasure of getting the first four episodes, and we don't get that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so they, they were able to see it. They know ahead of time what's going on. I don't know if they have like they had before where they didn't have previs. So uh, I'm curious of what their journey is within watching those episodes as we go. And, uh, you know, but they they mentioned something on the podcast of they know about certain things here and there. They'll come up later, which I look forward to. Uh, no, don't just listen to us, guys. We're going to probably recommend two other podcasts as well that are covering this. Uh, so you don't happen, happen to just happen to listen to us. Uh, we like covering these things. And that's obviously Panels to Pixels podcast. So. But uh, next one that you got, Steve? Yeah, so my last one was kind of Arthur Harrow as, as well, and just I, I'm kind of with you now. I didn't notice. I, I will. I will say this on the. You said something about Stephen having the tattoo as mm -hmm. well, and I think you might be right. I I noticed it on the, the third viewing. It looked like he had something on his forearm, um, but it was such a quick thing that I, I wasn't sure if it was the scales tattoo, the same scales tattoo that uh, that Ethan Hawke, uh, that Arthur Harrow had. Uh, but that's interesting because, all, like we said, like I asked the question about him still having a job, all those people in the museum that obviously were also followers of Amet and knew who Arthur Harrow was. And, you know, he grabs Stephen's arms and he says, there's chaos in you. And that's yes. that's all he all he says. So I'm I'm interested to see more about this character. Uh, Ethan Hawke is a, is a great actor, and uh, uh, it just was a, that opening sequence. But the first time I watched it, when we don't know who that character is, I was just blown away by. It. I'm like, what is he doing? Putting glass in his shoes? Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. That that was to me. It was like as if he was punishing himself or mm -hmm. something. It's, I'm sure it's some kind of a uh, uh, you know. There, there, there's religions and especially probably Egyptian religion where they do that. 
that where that's a certain way you 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 harm yourself to cause uh you know to to get some sort of religious high out of it which is which is an interesting one of the things that I now, of course, I didn't actually watch it on, on Disney Plus. I watched it on a different uh, server, so I'm not sure. Did they have? Did they put any kind of disclaimer about mental illness or no, harming yourself? Not, okay, no, no. It said extreme violence, uh, things of that nature, uh, language. But this is something that we'll talk about in the news too, because it's a different platform for Disney at this point with the Disney Plus platform. So we'll get into that when we talk about that because it, it they're they're doing a lot of changing and there's a reason for it and you'll find that out when we we talk about the news. Okay, um, all I, I've got a couple of little notes here of things we haven't uh, talked about uh, yet. Uh, have you got anything? Any other notes or any other points that you? No, I I think I kind of. Uh salt and pepper them in as we were talking <laughs> well you you may you may the songs were great in this it's oh, a couple yeah. of really short notes bob dylan engelbert humperdinck and wham of course uh is just yeah, amazing wham. i can't wait to see <laughs> i can't wait to hear what else uh they're gonna have throughout the series and this is just a it's a little thing for me um but uh, listeners i am a steven with a v and I do not allow people to call me Stevie. Like that. Oh, is, I don't blame you. <laughs> that is a no. My grandmother is the only ever person in my life who called me Stevie. And if someone calls me Stevie, I let them know very pointedly. This is not a joke. This is not something to make fun of. Do not call me by that name. And if they do it a second time, I'll remind them again. Please don't call me by that name. It's yeah. not even a joke. It's not something I want you to joke about. Do not call me by that name. And if they I, I keep, don't think I've ever done that to you. No, no, you have not. You have you have not. I will make a note of that. You have never called me <laughs> I, Stevie. I, that's why this is okay. shocking to me. Uh, okay. And I don't think anybody in the Zeds have ever called me Stevie. So that's, wow. I'm pretty sure I've never had to have that conversation with Zeds, but I have had to have that conversation with people. And usually if I have to have the conversation twice with you, if I have to have the conversation a third time with you, I cut you off. Like wow. I, I literally, I will ghost you completely because it's because I've realized you have no regard for my feelings. So, oh, uh, wow. but that's just my that's my thing. Um, uh, well, but, uh, nobody's called me Marky. Uh, actually, a uh, lot of my a lot of my uh, family do on occasion, but a lot of the time they no. But uh, I don't like that idea either too. But I'm yeah. not really as like definite about it like you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 um and i think that's it oh the only other thing uh, and we already kind of mentioned it was the whole thing of the security guard calling him scott i'm i'm interested to see if there's some reason for that if the security or another guard, personality <laughs> or if it's another personality i would love i would love for the the show to invent another personality for him because i think that would be super cool to have an extra personality that we haven't seen in the comics that they're going to invent for the show. I would love well, that. Well, how many co personalities were there within the comic? Was well, there only two? So the comic that I remember, and I might be, okay. I might be uh, misremembering it mm -hmm. was he didn't the comedy that the character in the seventies and the eighties that I remember. And like I said, I could be misremembering it did not have a, it wasn't a multiple personalities. He had multiple identities that he would use he had a he had a uh this hobo that he pretended he would get into hobo because it the whole idea was that uh he had changed his name from mark mark specter the mercenary had changed his name to stephen grant and become this playboy millionaire off the money that mark specter the mercenary had made and now he he came back to the states and he would he would drop into different different uh, multiple identities in order to get street like to find out the street gossip kind of ah, stuff and so he had okay. different characters that he would fall into but i don't remember it being a multiple personality disorder i just remember it being multiple identities that he would use throughout the Very series. Very much like Batman, if you think about it. You know, and, and Bruce that, again, Wayne and Batman. Right. Yeah. Again, that was why there was that comparison to Batman so so often that people don't like. But I could be misremembering it, listeners, so if somebody remembers better than me. But that's that's the way I remember the origin of the character was that Mark Spector died in a pyramid mm -hmm. in Egypt and was brought back to life by the god Khonshu to be his fist, to be his his avatar here yeah. on on Earth. And so when he came back to the United States after that that incident, that's the origin that I remember. He changed his name, or he 
became Stephen Grant with all the millions that uh, Mark Spector, the mercenary, had collected over the years. So Interesting. All right. Good. Good to know. Uh, there's also a place you could actually go, and we'll recommend that amongst our YouTube suggestions. So that way uh, people could get to know, because there's somebody that we know that actually does that information for comics. I have only one quote that I that I wrote down that we haven't already given, and that's uh, another uh, voice of Khonshu, where he says, Wake up, Mock! If he loses a scarab, I'll kill you both. Just, yes. That was the, And that, that was a good quote, too. That and that was, was something that made him like, wait, kill you both? He's going to get I'll rid of... kill you both. Wow. <laughs> it's like, they're the same person. <laughs> so They are the same person, but uh, regardless, <laughs> you kill them once, and they need uh, yeah. both of them. <laughs> uh, so that's all I got. Um, I didn't right. see any feedback uh, on Instagram. Did, uh, did you see any... Or Facebook. Did you see any... Or uh, nothing on Twitter, Facebook, or the email, but... Uh, Obviously, we will tell you guys how to send that feedback in a bit, but with that, we'll move right into news, and what I was mentioning before and earlier, uh, it, Disney Plus has put parental uh, controls within their app now, so oh. due to the acquisition, and we got them, obviously, they said three years after the last broadcast of the Netflix shows that we got. And those contracts were severed, and Netflix took them off. As you recall, this particular podcast started off with The Punisher. We continued it on with Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, uh, The Defenders. Uh, we continued on a little bit with Daredevil. I think we just covered, uh, what was it, season two and three? Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, uh, we didn't cover, yeah, that thing called Iron Fist. But uh, they basically had put parental controls because they didn't really edit any of the Netflix content, which was heavily aggressive with violence, language, sexual nature within it. I rewatched Jessica Jones. They left everything in. Uh, our friend Greg... In in our group that we we know each other from, Steve, he rewatched uh, Daredevil and he saw the head bashing thing with Fisk. They left that stuff in there, so I don't think a lot of people are saying that they kind of edited Hawkeye, but they put it back because there was something violent in there with blood and everything. But I think now they're trying to focus this more in a sense of it's not just a kids app anymore for Disney. It's really an adult because a lot of the content is somewhat adult oriented when it comes to Marvel. And we already know that Deadpool 3 is going to be a rated R film. Uh, as I heard from somebody who got to see a test screening from the Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange do, yeah, we do get to see somebody Merc with a mouth and... He is a bit tame in that one scene that we see. Uh, I'm not giving any spoilers away as to what happens within that said scene, but they do kind of censor him because it is a PG-13 film. So we we are getting that content. Disney Plus, I still have it. I pay it for it monthly. That's how I'm able to watch these episodes, and I'm loving what they did and the fact that I could revisit those Netflix shows, which I loved, and you and I both loved when we covered mm -hmm. them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's that's the news. Basically, we as viewers can go back to that. We don't have to run to Netflix to look at the, the Netflix shows that we loved that we started with. And we do have that entire content because you have to put in a code now because you're an adult <laughs> and you have to watch it uh, as an adult. So I, I think that's where they take it off from with that. Um, next part of news, Morbius came out, and it is okay. It's, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I'm basing it upon uh, friends who have seen it already opening night. Uh, they said it's entertaining, which doesn't sound that great. Uh, but me, I will go see it. It, it sounded to me just like uh, Venom and uh, Venom 2 Carnage. Uh, it sounded to me Sony was still doing what they were doing with their own property before. Um but I'm really enjoying what I get when I get it when it comes to the Spider-Verse, as it were, because Morbius is a villain from or anti-hero from the Spider-Man universe. And I, I look forward to it. I'm still looking forward to go seeing it. I'll probably go see it on Monday, 
probably the fourth and just uh, to see it. Hopefully uh, I do get to see it, but um, that's coming out or has come out. So I suggest go see it. Let us know what you think or if you didn't like it, that'd be amazing. Um, as far as uh, other news, uh, we will be covering that eventually when it comes out. There, there are other superhero content that we will be covering too uh, that came out recently. I just saw something, uh, Steve, I don't know if you're aware. When I went to Fandemic Dead, I got to meet and see Carrie Always uh, from The Princess Bride. Uh, our friend Ben moderated that particular panel, did a great job, phenomenal job. So Mr. Ben Beck himself from Wilhelm and uh, formerly of uh, The Spotlight, because they're now combined, had was able to interview Mr. Carrie Elwes. And apparently there's a new movie out. Oh, cool. With a minute. So you could stream it. Um, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of it. But uh, go look for it. All you have to do is check it. And uh, that's it for really for news, if anything. And we're on to uh, podcast recommendations. Um, the, the only ones I've got, you've already kind of mentioned them, but I, I will mention the, the Walking Dead cast on Podcastica. The Walking Dead, of course, is in its uh, season 11. It's in its final season now, and uh, mm -hmm. they are they are doing their coverage every week. I think we've got two or three episodes left. I get confused with the whole early release thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so Walking Dead cast on Podcastica, and also you already mentioned uh, TV Podcast Industries covering Moon Knight, and also House Podcastica on Podcastica will be or is covering Moon Knight as well. I think their episodes are already out. Yeah. As well as uh, for me, uh, well, you guys, if you listened to it already, our review, Rob and myself, when we did the Batman. So you could check him out on his particular website and I'll leave those and all that information within the notes. Uh, for YouTube recommendations, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is somebody that we know uh, who we c I kind of rely on too, Rob from Comics Explained. So all if you have to do is uh, look at uh, for the Rob Force or the Robverse. Uh, he does Comics Explained, and he explains certain aspects of these comics that are adapted. He'll give you the comics perspective of that particular character. So if you really want to know a little bit more about New Knight, go look for or search for Comics Explained on YouTube, and Rob will give you a whole breakdown of the character Moon Knight in the comics and what they changed in perspective from the comic to the adaptation that we're getting on the TV show now that we're currently are covering. Uh, right now, Steve and I are just taking on the perspective, well, I'm taking on the perspective as I know nothing of this character. I'm just watching it because I like the, the show, but I will pull a little bit here and there from what little information I know in comparison to the comic. So that way we could have a little bit of comparison because these are adapted from comics, and that's why these are panels to pixels. All right, so uh, do you want to let us know how the people can submit their feedback? Sure. If you want to submit your feedback, uh, of course, uh, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, which is uh, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or any other podcast player out there. If you've got an opportunity to give us a, a rating or a review, we would love that, and we would give you a shout-out right here on the podcast. Or you could... Go to our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. And currently, that uh, website redirects you to our Facebook group, which is the easiest way to really interact with us. And that's facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on Twitter. You can see us, uh, uh, you know, connect with us. And that's at panels to pixels. And that's panels and the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1, the T-O spelled out right in the middle, and the number one at gmail.com. Awesome. And YouTube. I already mentioned that we could see Rob uh, Rob from Comics Explain on YouTube. We are on YouTube as well. I haven't been putting up as many episodes because I've been busy <laughs> and I've been away for a bit. So, But you can find us on YouTube, and all you have to do is search panels to pixels podcast. And if you're there, please give us a thumbs up if you really like what we're doing and subscribe, which will notify you when we're, you know, going to have any new episodes that are coming up. Do not put in Panels to Pixels. We love Josh and what he does on Panels to Pixels for YouTube, and he covers a lot of different things that are Marvel-based and uh, comic book-based, uh, but, you know, we're very much different. So Panels to Pixels podcast is what you want to search for on YouTube. 
We are on Instagram at Panels Two Pixels Podcast. That's all words spelled out. Panels Two Pixels Podcast. Awesome. And you can check all the other podcasts on the Next Level Pod uh, Next Level Online Radio Podcast Network. And we highly recommend them. Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check all of them out there, and you can get the links. Very cool. Coming up next week, we will discuss the next episode of Moon Knight, which is not have a title yet. So as soon as we get that title, we will have it for you. Awesome. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, obviously, you guys know I have another podcast. It's called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And therein, I cover action, adventure, suspense, thriller films, anything that gets your adrenaline going. The last episode I had put out was literally just before I touched down in Atlanta for Fandemic Tour. And that was with the pod father himself and the pod mother herself. So uh, Jason Gabassi and Rima Joe from Podcastica and I covered the movie Airplane from 1980. <laughs> and I and that was pretty funny to do. And it was fun to do this to do something a little bit different. So check that out uh, this week. You'll get to hear Megan and myself cover Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So that will finally be up. And then after that, well, we're not sure. We'll let you know. Very, very cool. And of course, you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels. And I send voicemails to various other podcasts uh, when I can. It's been a busy couple of months. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been great. And you've been doing a great job, too, covering it. And I thank you for it, sir. Oh, no, thank you. So, uh, with that, that was our coverage for Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 1. And I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Later, Gators. Good night. <laughs>